What's up guys, Cameron here from Drums and Drams, and in today's video, not only are we gonna be opening and tasting this bottle of Elmer T. Lee, which to be honest with you is one of my holy grail bourbons from the Buffalo Trace Distillery, but we are also going to compare it to a couple of different things. First, an older bottle of Elmer T. Lee that's been open for three plus years, just to kind of get a feel for what that comparison's like, not only with the difference of airtime in the bottle, but also checking out the single barrel variants consistency, lack of consistency between these two things. And then I'm also gonna be doing a comparison to just a regular old Buffalo Trace store pick. So we do have a single barrel here as well, just to see if it really is worth chasing down an Elmer T. Lee, you know, especially when we start talking about paying over SRP for this bottle. At this time, I believe we're looking at about 40 to $50 if you find this thing at a reasonable price. Although, as many of you know, the secondary value of an Elmer T. Lee somewhere between $200 and $250, depending on who you ask. But the first thing that we need to do is get this bottle open, pour some of it out, see what this very fresh crack of 90 proof Elmer T. Lee is like. I hope it's good. I hope I don't have some sort of weird tainted single barrel because that would kind of ruin this video. But let's go ahead and check this thing out. A little cork pop America for Matt from ADHD Whiskey. And just to be honest with you, I mean, this is one of the most beautiful bottles in the game, in my opinion. Let's check this out on the nose and see what we get. Again, Elmer T. Lee, non-age stated, single barrel Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2, which is the high rye mash bill, coming in at 90 proof or 45% ABV. Here we go on the nose. All right, so as you might expect from a Buffalo Trace product, something that's not crazy old and something that's low proof, this is a little muted on the nose. It's not jumping out of the glass. So what we have here, first and foremost, is just a really delicate whiskey. When you're smelling something like this, when you're tasting a whiskey that is this low of proof and also this kind of careful, delicate, muted on the profile, whatever word you wanna use, you kinda of have to rewire your brain a little bit. A lot of us whiskey enthusiasts, even beginners, are used to something potentially higher than 90 proof. So I, I kinda of have to shift my expectations. So with that said, definitely not jumping out of the glass. It is a fresh crack, you might expect a little bit more coming out at you, and, and that's just not the case here. I would say the main note that I get here is that kind of Buffalo Trace honey note that we get across the board on many of their products. Once you get up to like 10 years plus Eagle Rare into some of the higher end stuff, you get a little less honey, a little more dark fruit. This is really honey forward. It's got a light fruit note to it, maybe somewhere along the line of like a, a peach kind of note, but, but nothing dark, nothing deep about this. It's really kind of a surface level profile. Yeah, so just sweet vanilla, kind of just a bright dessert quality to it. Other than the honey, the kind of light fruit peach, this vanilla note, there's not much else on the nose. With that said though, <laughs> I know this thing has like a, a sweet spot for me and maybe for some of you out there as well. You might have bourbons like this where you just are, are so tied up in it personally, you, you kind of want to love it. This is one of those pours for me where I want to love this Elmer T. Lee. You know, three years ago when I got my first bottle over here, I spent so long trying to get one of them and I do have a soft spot for it. But even though it is muted, even though it's kind of basic on the nose, just to be honest, um, I, I still like it. It is what it is. Cheers, guys. Let's go in for the palette now. So the palette on this thing actually tells a completely different story. And, and I have to attribute some of that maybe to the fact that it's a fresh crack. There's, there's no air in the bottle at this point. That thing kind of punched me uh, in the tongue a lot more than I thought it would. Big cinnamon up front. And, and that's, uh, you know, that's something that I get on the nose and the palette of Mash Bill 2 products from Buffalo Trace, which is that higher rye component in there. So you, you would expect more spice, more cinnamon. But, but the cinnamon note on here, it was very pronounced up front. So I'm a fan of that. I like the fact that it kind of is drinking over its proof slash expected profile based on the nose. Uh, but again, a pretty, a pretty simplistic pour here. I'm really gonna be curious to compare this to this older Elmer T. Lee and this Buffalo Trace as we get going. But we gotta do one more sip of this thing before we can get to that stuff. Cheers. I've gotta say, 90 proof, just don't expect this level of spice. So this thing is kind of out kicking its coverage on the spice front. And what that's allowing this whiskey to do is deliver those more delicate flavors with uh, more length on the palate. Like from front to back, this thing with that big cinnamon note that truly is carrying it from the tip of the tongue all the way down the esophagus, down the throat. Somehow a Kentucky hug on a 90 proof. I mean, this is kind of crazy for me. What that cinnamon's doing though along the way is delivering all of those delicate flavors a little bit more 
uh, I, I guess with a little bit more of a punch, a little more pronounced on the palate the entire way through. And so for me, while the nose on this thing was potentially a little lackluster, let's check it out one more time. Still nothing really special on the nose, but the palate is, is really nice. So it does defy expectations to some small degree and the finish is going on for quite a while. Nothing lingering beyond those same kind of light honey, light fruit, peach, uh, vanilla kind of notes. And of course that cinnamon hanging out in the background, but what this is doing is providing a really approachable, pretty concentrated flavor profile given the proof. And it's something that of course, beginner to intermediate whiskey drinkers are gonna love this stuff. And there's a lot of hate that goes around for Elmer, Elmer T. Lee, excuse me, and other Buffalo Trace products, rightly so to some degree, given the hype and the crazy markup on the secondary market. But this thing is actually pretty solid and, and I can see why people wanna chase this. If I could find this particular bottle, let's say, from this particular barrel, and I had the option to buy six or to buy 12, I would I would totally do it. I mean, it really is a fantastic everyday sipper. Do I think it deserves the crazy hype it gets? Absolutely not. But before we wrap this up, we have a couple more things to get to. So let's do a direct comparison to this other Elmer T. Lee. Again, open about three, three and a half-ish years. Of course, the same proof, but the only difference is that these two were released in different years. The one that we just opened is actually kind of like new old stock. This is a 2019, believe it or not. And the one that's been open for quite a while is a 2020. Now I find around 2020 into 2021, we start to see a decline in the quality of Buffalo Trace single barrel products. I kind of found that those products we're getting what I would imagine would be younger given the whiskey boom that was happening during the pandemic, although that's complete speculation, but a lot of the Blantons I had were just not very good. With that said, I, I'm kind of setting up this older bottle, which is a 2020. Maybe this is actually not gonna live up to this 2019, uh, which did really, really well on the palate as we just experienced, but now let's check this 2020 out with lots of airtime on the nose. As you would expect, given the airtime, I have to imagine that's the big difference on the nose. This thing feels even weaker. You know, it, it's really not jumping out of the glass at me. Now there is kind of a profile difference between the two where I would say this older Elmer T is giving me a little bit more of that light fruit note. Whereas this, uh, this one that I just opened, the 2019, is giving me certainly more spice Again, we talked about that, but also actually a little more oak on this one. So if I had to guess which one of these was older or maybe stored at a higher part of the Rick House or something else that's gonna give it some oak influence, I would go with this 2019, which makes sense because again, I feel like before 2020, a lot of these single barrel products were either older or just better barrels with a more intense concentrated flavor profile and a little bit more oak. So with that said now, let's go ahead and get this on the palette. The old 2020 open bottle Elmer T. Lee. That one on the palate definitely shows that it has been open for a while, much weaker, not nearly as much cinnamon. And I would say in terms of the actual spice profile of that, I'm getting more of like a white pepper, kind of a generic spice. It's not as aromatic, not as flavorful, which then as it rolls back onto the palate, means it's not quite delivering all of those gentle vanillas, honeys, light fruits in the same way. So definitely a cool comparison here. If you ever have the chance to try not only two bottles of the same brand, same line that have been open for varying amounts of time, but also a different single barrel for each one of these, give it a shot. Let me know if you've ever had that experience in the comment section, because I do like to do these things. There are a lot of variables at play here, of course, to draw you know, large scale conclusions, but I think this is a, a pretty cool comparison nonetheless. And I guess the last thing I wanna say about this 2020 that's been open for a little while is that I do get actually a lot more vanilla on this one. So that's kind of a note that I like, but it also could be showing me a little more youth, again, with that assumption that perhaps a younger barrel, perhaps a less oaky barrel. Either way, both very, very gentle profiles, but now the true test is to find out whether 
a pretty commonplace product like this Buffalo Trace store pick is something that you might wanna just pick up instead and stop hunting altogether for an Elmer T. Lee. This pick is gonna be coming in somewhere around $35 to $50, probably depending on the store you're gonna get it from. Store picks are gonna be a little more expensive, I think, so we kinda of have to factor that in. Normal Buffalo Trace is probably like $25 a bottle, but let's check this thing out on the nose now for our final comparison, and then we're gonna wrap this video up. Biggest difference here is that in the Buffalo Trace store pick, I'm getting more of a red fruit cherry kind of note. And this is starting to get into those quintessential Buffalo Trace notes of almost like a candied grape, or as it gets a little bit brighter, kind of like a cherry note, which is what I'm getting here. These are notes that are common, again, to products pretty much across the board of Buffalo Trace, but the flagship product, Buffalo Trace, is going to be coming from Mashbill 1, which is a lower rye content than mash bill too, which means probably a little more sweetness, probably a little less spice. That is certainly holding true here on the nose. I'm getting a little bit more of this red fruit note, but the rest of the whiskey is, I would say for now, it's a little less interesting than this brand new Elmer T. Lee that I just opened. It doesn't quite have the, the concentration of flavor in some of those honey notes and in, in, certainly in that spice you know, that spice kind of way, which you would expect with the lower rye content. But anyways, let's go ahead and check it out now on the palate. And this thing is going down smooth, buttery, very easy going on the palate, and definitely thin on the finish. The spice is not hanging around nearly as long. And I think overall it does feel more basic, a little bit more, a little bit more of like a young oak note to this one. I can just feel kind of this younger oak note, a more generic spice profile to it, and just a little bit thinner overall with not nearly the finish that these Elmer T's had, but for good measure, one more sip of this 2019 freshly cracked Elmer T. Lee. For me, the difference is clear. Buffalo Trace is a good substitute or maybe a good alternative, let's say, but not quite not quite a substitute. So let's go with that verbiage. Alternative, yes. I think if you can't find the Elmer T, get yourself a Buffalo Trace store pick. It really, really is good stuff. But you know, this 2019 Elmer T Lee, <laughs> I, I, I know I have a soft spot for this whiskey, but I think it really is good stuff. Even though the nose on this one is lackluster, the palate is killing it and the finish is really killing it because of that spice. I think whatever they're doing at Buffalo Trace to select these Elmer T. Lee barrels, I, I think it's a, I think it's going well, you know, at least 2019, great. 2020, maybe a little less so, but of course we have to factor in the airtime in the bottle there. And I would be super curious to try some of the newer released Elmer T. Lees after this huge whiskey boom, after stocks have presumably been depleted a little bit, you know, with aged barrels. I would love to see what that comparison's like, but we don't have any more time for that in this video. I'm sure I've talked long enough about this and I hope you found it interesting, at least to some degree. Are there any notes in any of these whiskeys that are gonna blow you away? Absolutely not. Is all of this stuff from Buffalo Trace really good whiskey, not only for novices and intermediates, but also like pretty advanced whiskey drinkers? Yes, I do believe so. And I totally see why people wanna chase this as their everyday sipper. I don't understand the price point beyond just the simple fact that Elmer T is rare. I don't think it deserves the price point that it has around two to $250, just given the flavor profile, given the lower proof. If I had to set an upper limit of what I would pay for one of these, I'm gonna be realistic. I would pay up to a hundred bucks for this, for the nostalgia, for the fact that I think it's a beautiful bottle, cool presentation. I just love everything about it, the history, the person, insert whatever thing here. Up to 100, I would do it for sure. But once you get past that, I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. That's gonna do it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Cheers, and I'll see you guys next time here on Drums and Grabs.